Hey guys, welcome back. I am talking to you today about luteal phases, short luteal phases, specifically after you've had HA. It's really common and I actually get a lot of questions and a fair few requests on Instagram and in email to talk about this subject. First of all, if you can hear the thunderstorm going on outside, sorry. So quick recap, the luteal phase, also known as the post ovulatory phase, is the half of your cycle that happens after you've ovulated and just before you've had your actual period bleed. It should last anywhere between 12 to 16 days. I actually see that recommended range jump around a little bit, like 11 to 14 days, but in general, more than 10, less than 16 is somewhere in the good range. That period of time is identified as the first day after ovulation, and the last day before the first day of your bleed. So as someone who works with women who have had HA or have HA, just recovered, I see this all the time. I reckon nine times out of 10, my clients or society members have short luteal phases straight off the bat after getting their first period back. So it's still huge, huge progress to be getting a period to be ovulating but we're always talking about optimization and having a long enough luteal phase is really like the home stretch. That's really, it's the last part of the cycle before the bleed. The bleed is the first part of your cycle. So it's the luteal phase, the post ovulatory phase is the final phase of your menstrual cycle. I see a lot of 10 day cycles or less and I get a lot of questions about it. So we're gonna dive into what it means, how you can start solving it. So the reason it's important to have a long enough luteal phase is because it's an indicator of your progesterone levels. If progesterone is still too low, you're gonna maybe have a great follicular phase, first half of your cycle, you're gonna ovulate, it's gonna look wonderful, you're gonna be like, whoa, my period is crushing it, my cycle is crushing it, and then progesterone is going to run out of steam and it's going to come crashing down way too soon and you're going to have a bleed too early. When progesterone is not high enough, this means, to put it really simply, we can't get pregnant. You could have a great follicular phase, you could have a perfect ovulation, all of these things are really, really important for getting your period because without a great follicular phase, you can't develop an egg, you can't rupture it without ideal ovulation, you can't release the egg. And then without enough of a luteal phase, you can't maintain progesterone long enough for that corpus corpus luteum to develop. And so it's going to disintegrate early, which is going to result in an unsuccessful pregnancy, which is the goal of our menstrual cycle. Although our menstrual cycle plays a huge role in our overall health and is linked to so many different areas, to put it really simply, and the thing that is most important to many, many of you listening is without a long enough luteal phase, you cannot get pregnant. So I explained how to know if your luteal phase is too short already, right? Less than 11, 12 days. To be totally transparent, I have seen women with 10 day luteal phases get pregnant. That was me. But the caveat that I have to that is typically we are seeing them have 10 day luteal phases and we're not getting pregnant. We work together, we like implement some changes to their lifestyle, we reassess their diet and their exercise, and then they'll get pregnant in a couple of cycles. So my theory is actually that that cycle would have had a longer luteal phase had they not had sex. In all of the cycles that we're working together, they're having sex or having sex at the right time. So there's never really a cycle that we're seeing them have a longer luteal phase and not get pregnant, if that makes sense. We would have to have them abstain for a couple of months to see if we can get their luteal phase longer and then get them pregnant in order to have the evidence that their luteal phase would have been longer. And a lot of my clients are just not willing to do that, but it is the ideal way to do it. So what's causing your short luteal phase? It could be if you are coming off of birth control or if you are coming out of HA that your period just needs a few goes to get it right. I kind of explain it with this analogy of imagine you're starting up a car that you haven't run for years. You turn the key and nothing happens. You turn the key again and it kind of starts to start up. 
you turn it on again and it starts and it goes for like 20 seconds and then it turns off. And you do it one more time and it finally starts back up. Sometimes it's just a case of like <laughs> giving it time, shaking off the dust. Yes, that can totally happen. If you're being consistent with your diet and exercise changes and you're not changing anything, that could be setting you back. More commonly, we, we can find a reason, a specific reason or two or three that's holding people back. Things like caffeine intake and stress. If you watch my video on how I got my luteal phase corrected, uh, you'll, you'll discover that a big piece of it for me was reducing coffee intake, making sure it was later on in the day if I did have it, and having breakfast, right? So the stress response here is huge. If you're not eating, if you're fasting, if you're underfed, if you're over-caffeinated, over-stimulated, you're causing stress, which can result in low progesterone. If you are continuing to exercise, so when we see women get their period back who did manage to continue exercising, I see a lot of the time they still have a long, sorry, they still have a short luteal phase um, or a short, ovulation and a long follicular phase, all the things. So be weary when people say, oh, I got my period back and I didn't have to stop exercising. I do question the quality of their cycle from day one. I'm sure there are people who did achieve it. There are people who get their period back with exercise, but still have to take steps to work on their luteal phase. This might be you. That's a common one I see if you're still training or have a physical job. You're probably gonna see some impact on your luteal phase and probably not gonna get a perfect cycle from the get-go. Not enough food, same as with the exercise thing. If you're kind of cutting back on food now that you've had your first period, you're probably gonna see that just because you're getting a period doesn't mean that that energy deficit that you're in isn't affecting another area of your cycle, whether or not it's your luteal phase or your ovulation. I don't know, maybe it's both, but um, you can't have a luteal phase without ovulation, but you know what I mean. In general, the way I'm always going to address a short luteal phase problem is lifestyle factors. I'm not a doctor, I can't prescribe to you medicine. We can look at supplementation and that's something that you can do too. What are you lacking in? What's known to help with your cycle? There's a whole bunch of supplements that are shown with science to help with your ovulation, with your cervical mucus quality, with your egg production and your egg quality. And looking into those things can really help with your overall cycle. So. I would definitely dive into the supplementation route when I'm seeing issues with my cycle and I know that I have addressed all of the lifestyle factors. But nine times out of 10, maybe nine and a half times out of 10, <laughs> it's a lifestyle factor around exercise, eating, stress, probably a combination of all of them. Because the reality is we don't just go from HA to like, and all of the lifestyle factors and habits and behaviors that got us into HA to never relapsing or falling back onto those old habits. So we can typically find something that you're doing, whether it's um, you know really holding on to the possibility of weight loss or avoiding or gaining too much weight or really trying to get into the gym a little bit too soon. Those are the types of things that we see more often than not affect someone's luteal phase. So just look in the mirror, be honest with yourself, what are you doing? So I talked a little bit about how I fixed my luteal phase earlier. I'll put the link to the blog post and the video in the show notes of this, so the description of this, so you can have a look at it yourself. It's a really great little companion about my story and how I fixed it in order to get pregnant. And I will tell you, like I was holding on to some of those habits. I was drinking too much coffee. I was not eating breakfast till like 10 a.m. I Just because I had gotten my period back doesn't mean I wasn't still susceptible to the things that caused me to lose it in the first place. So how I address this with my own clients is we basically sit down and we do a full interview process. So maybe you can get some tips or ways to self-reflect from this and I'll give you a resource as well to use, but we go through nutrition intake. What are you eating? Are you eating all the macronutrients? Are you balancing them together or are you favoring others? Are you slipping back into some restrictions? Are you avoiding some things? Are you eating enough protein per pound of body weight? Um, all of these things are really gonna play a role in the overall picture. I know sometimes it's hard for us to be like, oh, come on, is it really that I've cut back on how much carbs I'm putting in my dinner? That just seems like so small and the it can't have this overall effect. No, it does. It really can 
play a role. So we'll go back through their nutrition. What have you changed? What have you not been willing to do yet that maybe it's time to do? This includes things like stimulants, caffeine, Red Bulls, you know. Physical activity. What does your day-to-day look like? Are you still going to the gym? When you are, are you pushing yourself past an intensity that you really maybe shouldn't be at this time? Just take a good hard look at your physical activity right now and try to be objective about how much of it you're doing and be realistic about the possibility that it's affecting your period by a couple of days. Stress. Stress is a huge one for the luteal phase. It really is. If you're going through some traumatic times, if you're putting your body through a lot of physical stress or a lot of emotional stress, you need to be mindful that you could be in more of a a deficit than you think and then and that can be affecting your luteal phase. It's very, very common for stress to be linked to your short luteal phase. So just be aware, think objectively, is this thing that's going on? What action do I need to take to reduce some stress in my life? Whether it's not having as much on your plate. For me, I was working weekends and I just shouldn't be. I just took the full weekend off and it actually played a huge role combined with eating more cutting back on coffee, all those little tiny things really added up to a lot and helped me get pregnant the following month. If you're absolutely certain that you're hitting all of those targets, crushing it, it might be worth looking into what supplementation you might want to take. You can look into some things that are good for helping with ovulation. Like I said earlier, there are supplements that are generally backed that work for most people to improve egg quality and cervical mucus. You can look into what works well for increasing progesterone naturally, but getting tested for what you're deficient in can be one of the best things. That's also something I did. I needed to improve my copper and I needed to get onto a really good prenatal that has the majority of the things that are on the list of proven to help with cervical mucus and egg quality. So that's something to look into. Working with someone to figure out what's up isn't always accessible to everyone. And a lot of us want to DIY it ourselves. I was definitely there. I'm totally into that. So what I actually did was create a PDF that you can download. You can either print it or it's totally fillable with all the check boxes, all of the fillable text boxes for you to go through and ask yourself all of these questions about nutrition, about lifestyle, about exercise, about stress. And it also takes you through how to identify progress. So it helps you see what you're going to work on. Okay, I've filled out this form. I can see a a trend here. I'm like not eating enough of this. I'm avoiding over here. I could actually add more of this in. And it helps you come up with a game plan for that. And it does that in the exercise area and the lifestyle area. And then it also shows you how to track progress as your making these changes and how to set timelines to know, okay, well, I've tried this for X amount of time. Is it working? Is it not? So I've made that. It's called the period recovery game planner. It's awesome. It, there's a link in the show notes, or you can go to the hasociety.com forward slash store. And I have a few products on there. So you'll find the game planner in there and yeah, download that, use it. And it's designed to have multi-use purpose. So it's not just use it once and then hope it works and throw it away. It's designed for you to revisit it, track progress, be like, okay, this isn't working. I'm going to tweak this. I'm going to tweak that. And it helps keep you accountable. So you can print it or save it on your desktop, set on your calendar every time you're going to revisit it to keep updating the plan and keep moving forward with the plan. So that's a really, really great tool for you to use, especially if working one-on-one with a HA coach like myself or with a dietitian or a nutritionist is way too hard. So I hope that helps. Check it out guys. And I cannot wait to see you next time. If you have a request for a topic you would like covered, please let me know in the notes or on Instagram, whatever, however you want to reach out. I always write down the suggestions and recommendations from people. So I really appreciate it. And please subscribe to this channel. Give me a thumbs up, all that stuff. We're really trying to grow this YouTube channel. I've decided recently to like put some heart and soul into it. So if you like it, please let me know. So then I know to keep going down this route. Okay, guys, have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.